What's up guys, it's your boy Damon and welcome back to another Epic 7 video. Today we're going to be talking about Angelic Montmorency. I finally got mine close to done in terms of skills and, you know, specialty change and all that jazz or gear is still not where I want it to be. But in terms of getting her into combat, I've succeeded and, I, and I've tested a lot of stuff that I wanted to test with her before I brought this video to you guys and was like, yo. <laughs> right? Just like that, that yo face, right? Looking at Angelic Montmorency, I just want to say that she's a character that does require some investment up front. Now, you guys are probably wondering, okay, is she worth it? And the answer is absolutely yes. And I'm explaining to you guys why. Angelic Montmorency is one of the first characters outside of Angelica that I can say can literally be used everywhere. And Dizzy, of course. Angelic Montmorency can be used in your Wyvern 11 team. She can be used as a front line or she can be used as a support healer for your front line. She can also be used in Golem as a primary healer or a secondary healer, depending on what it is that you're trying to do. She can be used in Banshee 11. I recommend using her with Wondrous Potion if you guys are going to be running her in Banshee. She could also be used in A11 if you guys are going to be using her there. And because of her utility and because of her general overall utility, she can also be used in Raid and she can also be used in PvP. Now, as we continue through this video, guys, we're going to be talking about what type of builds you guys can use for, what type of stats you guys are looking for. You guys are going to be, we're going to be talking about the most important things to use when trying to build Montmorency and find success, especially if you guys are looking for a healer that you can pretty much use anywhere. So now that you guys have kind of seen where she can be used, let's talk about how she can be used so you guys can get her in there and get access to her as fast as possible. Now we're looking at her runes. Now there's a couple of key runes that I recommend investing in if you guys are doing the specialty change, you guys want to use her as fast as possible. Let's say maybe you guys don't, you know, want to spend all your crystals over the weekend trying to get her full full tree done and you guys want to get some stuff done so you guys can use her immediately and maybe build her over time. The most important 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 runes in my opinion, are going to be the guard rune. When using purification, has a 10% chance to grant continuous healing to all allies for one turn. This is going to help her or help increase her sustain and help her be a more effective healer overall. Once you get into that, and once you put the three points into there, what I recommend is just kind of, you know, putting one point, you know, wherever you need it, whether that's increasing her effect resistance or increasing her health with the health rune. Once you guys get access to expanding the tree, what I recommend doing is putting little points here and there. Uh, you want to put enough points into the tree that you guys can get to the harvest rune, which has a 50% chance to reset cooldown or purification uh, if the caster is not debuffed at the beginning of the turn. And then you also want to look at when using purification with the mercy rune, has a 100% chance to heal all allies additionally regardless of debuffs. In my opinion, in combination with the guard rune, the harvest rune, and the Mercy Rune, these are the three most important runes to get into play or get maxed so she can be effective so you guys are not stuck farming the water dungeon forever, right, to get this maxed out. I think those are the three most important, followed by, uh, after testing, of course, the Prosperity Rune, which is also really good. And you guys can get this, you know, whenever you guys see fit. Now, if you guys are wondering, like, yo, D, why wouldn't we max all the other stuff too, uh, initially? Well, that's because a lot of this other stuff can be offset. So, like, yeah, it's hard to offset getting an extra 40% effect resistance, but chances are the enemy's going to land harmful effects on you anyway. And what I mean by offset is you can offset the lack of the investment in here with artifacts. So, like, if you guys are wondering, uh, uh, running a Wondrous Potion, that could help offset the lack of effect resistance. If you guys are running a Magaraha's Tome, then that could offset the combat readiness this increase here and this is why i said like initially the three most important are, are going to be the guard the harvest and the mercy rune and then from there you could just kind of flesh her out over time and then you know get her done now if you guys are in a rush and you guys just want to go you know over the weekend and just you know bang her out just like bam you know i'm done then that's something that you guys can look at as well and just be finished okay so next thing we're going to talk about guys is how to build her. you guys are like okay all right dude, cool you know we know we know what runes to invest in so we can get the specialty change get her you know as fast as possible but we know where she can be used overall but how do i build her what artifacts do i use instead of just saying hey guys put this generic build on her plus this blah 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 and you guys win which we'll kind of do for the artifacts <laughs> so allow me to be a hypocrite there for a second but, but in terms of 
the actual gear sets but there are a couple of key things that you guys are going to be looking for if you guys are building gear what i recommend doing is you guys are looking for health percent effect resistance speed and defense percent those are the four stats that you're looking for now could effectiveness help her you know increase the the likelihood of her sleep sure but to be honest, where she's going to shine most is the rest of her skills. I would rely on her sleep kind of as a secondary. If it happens, great. But everything else is what you're going to want to have in place. And then just treat, like I said, the sleep as a secondary mechanic, not a primary means. Now, in terms of PvP, that can help you a lot. But mostly it's going to be her sustain overall and her speed Plus her tankiness is going to help make her as annoying as possible. So when you guys are looking at the gear overall and some stats, you guys are going to be looking to get as much defense as you can. And since she has a high base defense, so like 735, I think is what her base defense is. It's relatively easy to tank her defense up and, and get rolling. As you guys can see, I only have one defense ring on her. I'm running her defense, health, and speed. And this is allowing me to get her where I need to get her. Now, I mentioned that she's not quite where I want her to be. I want her with a little bit more health, at least 15,000 HP. And then if we can get some more defense out of that, great. But I definitely, definitely, definitely want to get her some more health. I also don't like that her speed speed is only at 174. I think my goal marker for my Mount Morancy is 200 speed. Now when I share these stats with you, I invite you guys not to feel like, you know, oh, if I don't have these stats, I can't use her. But these are just some hard numbers that you guys can aim towards if you guys are trying to see your Mount Morancy really crush it. One of the things with her at 174 is she's a, she was a little bit too slow for my taste in Banshee 11, but I think with the extra 20 speed, that would position her in a way that would allow her to cleanse uh, as much as she can, especially if I'm going to be running her on a Wonders Potion um, in conjunction with her other abilities. Now, the reason I recommend health, effect, resistance, defense, and speed is because you guys want to get her effect resistance over 100% so you guys can capitalize on that rune that gives her the extra combat readiness increase after she uses her purification ability. Now, the last thing I want to talk about, guys, is artifacts. Now, you guys understand how to build her, where she's good, what to do with her, what runes are most important early when you guys are starting out or you guys are trying to get her into the fix. Now you guys are probably wondering what artifacts are best for her. So in terms of artifacts, I recommend, hold on, let me pull out my handy dandy notebook here. In terms of artifacts, I recommend overall to look at Wondrous Potion and Magaraha's Tome. Those two four star artifacts are probably two of the artifacts that you're gonna be running most of the time on Angelic Mob Morancy. Now, that can be challenging because you might not necessarily have five Wondrous Potions or, excuse me, six Wondrous Potions <laughs> or a bunch of Magaraha's Tomes lying around and or Artifact Charms to max your artifact. So if you guys are just getting into the game or if you guys are low on cash, another really, really good budget artifact that I think is really, really good for Montmo is going to be Prophetic Candlestick, guys. So if you guys have access to a Prophetic Candlestick, it's a three-star artifact that I'm sure a lot of you guys have. It's really easy to max. This is a really, really good one. Prophetic Candlestick is not going to be very stat dependent, so she won't need to be super duper fast to maximize like Margaraha's Tome, right? So Margaraha's Tome, you're going to want her quick, you know, so she can get those turns, boom, 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 boom. And Wondrous Potion, you'll want her faster, obviously, so you can capitalize on the extra cleanse every time she gets a turn. The more turns she gets, the more harmful effects she's going to remove, which makes sense if you're stacking her abilities or stacking the artifacts with the abilities. Now, in terms of Prophetic Candlestick, Prophetic Candlestick is one of those artifacts that you could throw on there and especially if you're going to be running her as a front line which you can because her base defense is relatively high and then once you invest in the runes to increase her base health that will offset her low base health as well if you're going to be running her in front prophetic candlestick can be really good especially since her skill two is only a two turn cooldown this will put you in a position to potentially have your skill two up a lot more frequently so you can keep the sustain up and maximize the abilities that she gains from investing in her skill tree for her specialty chain. Some other notable artifacts that you guys can look at when trying to build Montmorency are going to be Rod of Amarius and Idol's Cheer. Now, I don't necessarily recommend Rada Amarius until you get her to a point that she's over 200 speed and you have the sets that she needs or close to being to wherever it is that you guys have imagined her. But Rada Amarius can be really, really good when you're chaining her skill 3 with the combat readiness increase plus her skill tree and then she chains into her skill 2 and it can really, really help with a lot of sustain. I don't necessarily recommend artifacts like Celestine just because she's not really gonna be using her skill one that much due to the fact that she's she's really good at keeping her cooldowns low. 
okay? Now the other one is Idol's Cheer, if you guys are gonna be using her for PvP, just so you guys can set her up in a way that she's tanky enough, and she's going to also increase the combat readiness of your team members while also increasing her combat readiness when she does use her skill three. So that's something that you guys can look at as well. Ultimately, Mount Marancy, there are a ton of ways that you can utilize her. She is a great, great, great unit. Now, in terms of being better than Angelica, I don't think it's a anything about her being better than Angelica overall. I think the thing about Montmorency versus Angelica is this. When you look at pulling in Angelica versus a Montmo, Angelica is just easier to use because the way that her skill kit is set up, the way her bank account is set up, she's just easier to use up front. Now, Montmorency, on the other hand, if you guys don't have a Tamarin, if you don't have an Angelica, can be just as good or better in some situations because of her low cooldown system, but she just needs a lot more investment up front in order for you to capitalize on that. If you guys have Angelica already, are, could you still use Montmorency in the same team? Absolutely. If you don't have Angelica, could you use Montmorency? Yeah, but it's not a case of whether one is better than the other. It just depends on what you have available to use in your box. Anyway, guys, uh, with that being said, that's all I wanted to cover today. Hopefully, we were able to answer a majority of your questions. If you have any more questions that you guys want answered about Angelica Montmorency, definitely let me know in the comment box. And with that being said, we will see you guys in the next video. Peace.